Hello, crochet friends, it's me, Jonah, and Lens Thing, and your inspiration to respond to today's show and tell. So, today I made one of my dogs a crochet dog sweater because, of course, winter's coming and so is fall, so it's time to make them coats so that they can stay nice and warm and cozy. And I decided to make the Bernat striped crochet dog coat because I like the striping effect, and I think blue looks really good on one of my dogs. And also, with the yarn I'm using, there are so many different color options and the new Olgo format. The yarn I used is Red Heart Super Saver. Now, in this one, I used several different yarns. I used the Delft Blue, the Lapis Variegated Mix, and then I also mixed in some other worsted weight yarns, such as Karen One Pound. So you can take any four weight yarn, as long as it's very similar, and put them in here. So it's a great stash buster if you have Karen One Pound, Super Saver, Simply Soft laying around. You can put it all in here and make a beautiful dog coat. Then if I flip it over, we have a little leg. Leg cuffs here, nice and nice and ribbed. And then you have a nice ribbed neck, so it's nice and stretchy. And then when I said the Olgo format, I was referring to this, because if you don't want to cut the yarn, you can let it stripe by itself. You just snip out the plastic tie, pull out the tie, and let it go, and it's the smoothest yarn you've ever crocheted with. So for this project, the pattern recommends a four millimeter crochet hook, but today I'll be demonstrating with a five millimeter crochet hook, because it just makes my stitches a little bigger so that you can get a better idea of what I'm doing. And today I'll show you how to do the double crochet decrease, double crochet, and how to do the single crochet rib stitch. So let's get started, and I'm gonna show you how to do those stitches with this nice yarn. Okay. So now you either take your Super Saver Ogo or you just regular skein of Super Saver. And then you can get started. But first I'm gonna show you a little swatch you made. So this doesn't have to decrease in it, but I'll be showing you that. So down here is that nice and stretchy brim and it goes right back into shape. See it's in line, comes out of line, comes back in. Then up here it doesn't have that same stretch. It's more of a stiffer fabric, but it is double crochet. And then you can see the point where they join together. It's very nice and smooth. And you can see it's lightweight, but it's also warm. But if you'd like, you can make it in wool. You can use a thicker yarn and a smaller hook to make it even denser. Or you can use like a very soft cashmere for your dog. Whatever you think is best for your dog and your dog's needs. So I'm going to take out my hook, um, the one I'll be using for demonstration purposes. And today we'll be starting at the neck here. This is where you start and then you work your way down, flip it over and then add these on later. So we're going to start up here with the single crochet ribbed brim. So you're going to begin with a slip knot. Do it whatever way you like. You can do this way where you create an X at the bottom, come over and scoop up. You can also wrap it around your fingers twice. Pull the first loop over the second, and then the first loop over the second again. And then you're good to go. And one last way you can do it is you can just make a little loop like this with this strand on top. And then pull this strand under. Catch it and pull back up. So there's many ways to do a slip knot. Those are just a few if you're a beginner. And then for this little sample, I'm just going to chain six. Actually, let's do five. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five. So as you can see, we have five little chains here. One, two, three, four, five. So then we're going to skip this first one right here. I'm going to the next one, insert our hook, pull up a loop, hear that again, go into the loop, pull up a loop, you have one, two on your hook, yarn over, and then pull through two. And that's your first single crochet. Next stitch, pull up, pull through, insert, pull up, pull through, and repeat. And now we have four stitches. And then we have to turn our work like a page in a book. So we come on this side and flip it over. So we're looking at the back side. And then you got to work a chain once you're up higher. And then if I 
Look at it closely here and slide out my hook. There's different parts of a stitch. There's this bar right here, which you're gonna ignore. And then if you turn it to the top, there, there's these little Vs. And this loop right here, farthest away from you, that's the front loop. I mean, that's the back loop, my apologies. This is the back loop. And the loop closest to you is the front loop. And then when you're just, when it just says single crochet into the next stitch, I mean, it's go under both. So you'll always go under both, unless it specifically says to go into the back or go into the front loop. So for this pattern, it says the single crochet in the back loop. So we're gonna turn our work over here, tilt it down and we have our two loops. And we're gonna go through the back one and work a single crochet. And we're going to the next one and work a single crochet. And stir into the next single crochet. And that was four single crochets. So if I pull it up to the camera here, you can see we have this ridge right here. But on the back side, there is no ridge. That's because on this side, there's a loop left. But on this side, you worked into the loop. And we're going to yarn over and go into our next stitch, which is right here. Right in this loop, going through both. So it's a sturdy join. Yarn over, insert, pull up a loop. And you have three loops on a hook. And over, pull through two. And over, pull through two. Then you're going to yarn over and sit into the next stitch, pull up. And over, pull through two. And over, pull through two. And that is a double crochet. It's a taller stitch, so it works up faster and it uses less yarn. But it's also not as dense. So there's qualities of the single crochet that the double crochet doesn't have, and there's qualities of the double crochet that the single crochet doesn't have. So it just depends on the project, the yarn, the hook size, your tension, and all the other dependent variables in these two stitches. So I finished this row of double crochets, and you can see the difference. Up here it's a flat stitch, and down here it's ridged. So we're going to turn... And now I'm going to show you how to do a decrease, because you also decrease in this pattern. And I'll pull up where you would decrease. Because if I flip it over here, you're shaping it. So it stops right here for the, their belly, and then it comes out onto the back. And if I pull it up here, right here, you can see that doesn't look like a normal double crochet. That green stitch right there. So if I flip it over, you can see it's kind of like two double crochets, but they're together. And then that creates this flat nice and smooth seam so we're going to chain up three and then you're going to yarn over and insert into the next stitch pull up a loop yarn over pull through two leave it yarn over go into the next stitch pull up a loop yarn over pull through two and then now that you have three loops on your hook you're going to yarn over and pull through all three and now those three stitches just went to two so we're gonna, we're gonna work some double crochets just to the other end where I can show you again. So what you're gonna do is yarn over, insert, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, insert into the next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through three. And then double crochet in your final stitch. So if you go back down to this, so we had three, we had nine stitches. And now if we count the stitches in this row, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's because we did our two decreases right here and right here. Like so. And then now you can see how we've smoothly come down to five stitches as opposed to nine. And that is how you work your decrease. And then all you have to do is just come down here and seam it up. This is not visible because it's underneath your dog's belly. Add these little cuffs in the single crochet like I've already shown you. Then you border this part in your main color. And then there's your striping and your neck cuff. So it's actually a very easy pattern. As you can see, in the pattern, you're actually using a 4 millimeter hook. So it's dense and you, can't, you can see my hand rippling the fabric. But you can't see my hand through it. But if, it's, if this is really cold where you live, then I recommend using a wool yarn for your dog 
that's a smooth, not a scratchy one, but it's like a smooth worsted strand. Sugar Bush from Yarn Inspirations has some good yarns if you want to use those. Or patents too. Those are great as well for dogs. But this is a great, very, very washable option for the late summer, early fall, just to get them started. To have the yarn do its typing on its own, you can check out this Red Heart Super Saver Ogo. There's also a big donut Ogo, but that's thinner. So for this product, I recommend using the Super Saver Ogo. And it's tangle free and quick start. And this is how you open it up. But there's more information on the back side this side and then inside here on the label. I hope you like today's show and tell. Now to the outro. I hope you enjoyed learning the foundation of how to make this Bernat striped crochet dog coat. And of course you can make it in any sizes, small, medium, large, and extra large for whatever kind of dog you have. And don't forget to check out the Super Saver Ogo and see all the gorgeous color combinations. This one's called Jewel Tone, and it's one of my personal favorites, so you should make sure to check it out. And please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to Jonas Hands and also to your inspirations. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and crochet away, friends.